So let's start with it. We got five dysfunctions, and um, the first is massive. And I think you and I could spend hours talking about this because of what, you know, we have the five dysfunctions of a team. The word team comes from the Greek word teme, which is the word for family. And I look at I this. I did not know that. There you go, brother. That's you got awesome. one today. T-E-M-E is a Greek word for, for family. And it's where with the root word of where we get the word team. And I look at this and I go, this is a great way to build a great business, great team, but also great family. Um, so the first one is an absence of trust. And um, it is very, very hard once you have that absence of trust to have a great team. So how can we go about building a good foundation for trust with our teams? Well, so the first thing we have to do, Brian, is we have to help people understand the kind of trust we're talking about is based in vulnerability. Mm. And the, the Latin root of vulnerability is wounds. Mm. Vulnerability. And that's we have to be comfortable with who we are, wounds and all. And when people can't be vulnerable, in other words, when they protect themselves and they cover things up, you don't build real trust. So it's mm. vulnerability-based trust. And the way we do that is by practicing it. And as, and as in all things, you start a little small. So like here's a here's a very I, I like being practical. Here's the practical exercise we do that takes 15 minutes with every executive team I work with, whether they're the uh, Fortune 10 company or an entrepreneurial one or a, a church or a school or whatever else. We go around the team and we say, tell us where you grew up and how many kids were in your family and where you were in that order. And tell us what the most difficult challenge of your childhood is. Not your inner childhood, just being a kid. What was, what was interesting about the challenge? Mm. 10 minutes later, we've gone around. People just say their thing really fast. And I ask, how many of you guys knew all this? And every team I've worked with, people that have been working together for 15 years will go, I didn't know half of this. Mm. And what they realize is I could just put myself out there and it created greater empathy. You know, the prayer of St. Francis, seek to understand more than mm -hmm. to be understood. Mm -hmm. People suddenly understand each other. And more importantly, people said, so me, me telling others about things about me is actually a good thing, not a bad one. Then mm. we use a different tool, a simple one. We have this new one called the Six Types of Working Genius, but we used to use the Myers-Briggs, and, and there's all these tools, and we say, can you just admit to people what you're good at and what you suck at? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's the genius gift God gave you, and what are the things he didn't give you? Mm -hmm. And if a team can sit around and go, hey, you guys, I know I'm bad at this. You guys know that, I know it. I think right. I'm pretty good at this. Suddenly, the trust in the room, people go to meetings and they say, I need help, or I messed this up or I got to apologize or you're smarter than me. I, I, I want to listen to what you have to say. And that's what builds this teamwork of tr this trust on a team. Mm -hmm. And without that, the next four dysfunctions you can't overcome. Right. And one of the dynamics is talking about corporate America. People are terrified to reveal any type of weakness. Yep. You'll be stepped over. You'll be brought around. People will leverage against you. Um, so it, it actually creates the natural dynamic is creates the opposite of yep. what it takes to build trust and, and it becomes distrust. The other dynamic, uh, you know, I, I was, I was on the golf course, uh, yesterday with my brother and my brother Dermot is the, uh, named after a bishop, by the way. I love it. Uh, Dermot. <laughs> Dermot was, we we're on the golf course together and, um, there was some, there was some app we had to download for some golf tournament we were about to enter. And I'm just fumbling around with this thing. And <laughs> That's me. I, I just handed it to him and I said, thank God I can speak. And he goes, you are deeply gifted in one area. And he goes, the truth is you can be flawed in all the others, Bri. We got your back. And that's, I thought, you know, that's kind of true. <laughs> well, and you know, that's the key to this. And this is where it comes back to our faith and to family is that we need one another. God mm -hmm. didn't design any of us to have right. everything we need. Right. And when you and people talk about diversity. When you have a diversity of skill sets and gifts on a team mm. and you appreciate those, it changes everything. Right. And so that's kind of what we're saying here. But if you're not vulnerable about right. it and you say, no, yep. I'm great at all of this. Yep. No, some are a thumb, some's an index finger, some's a pinky, right? It's, it, we, it's all the different members that require to make it up and it's okay. This is what I do well. Now, I, I would also say, because I've, I've seen this go well, and I want you to speak to this, where some people will then go, uh, that's just who I am, and then you have to deal with it. So there's an abdication can happen, right? So it's like, yes. no, this is my gift, and then these are my weaknesses, and now you know my weaknesses. I'm like absolved from any responsibility. And I know we're going to talk about accountability, but that is that's the flip side to it, right? So you want the vulnerability, but you still got to uh, make sure you have ownership. Yeah.